Hello, Commonwealth Sport Canada community. My name is Erin England, and I am the social media lead behind the Commonwealth Sport Canada accounts. You are tuning into Champ Chats, the series where we dive a little bit deeper into the lives of athletes and alumni of the Commonwealth Games. Today, I'm joined by a swimming athlete who is not afraid to make a splash. She won four Commonwealth Games medals at the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. And on top of that, she earned medals at both the 2016 and 2020 Olympic Games. Welcome to Champ Chats, Kylie Moss. Kylie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're so excited to sit down and chat with you. So let's kick things off by talking about your first Olympic Games in 2016. I'm sure you went into the 100 meter backstroke race hoping to swim a great time and you did just that, earning a bronze medal for Canada. Can you describe what was going on in your mind during that race and what that moment was like when you touched the wall and realized you had won an Olympic medal? Yeah, it was obviously a super special experience and something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Um, in 2016, I was new to the international competition stage, so I was extremely excited and um, happy, nervous, all the emotions just going into those Olympics. Um, I really wanted to do as well as I possibly could and put my hard work um, to the test, but I also didn't really have many expectations because it was my first ever Olympics. It was my first ever like senior international team. So I really went in with just an open mind and um, the belief and confidence in myself. And I think that really came through and showed um, being able to get on the podium. I never expected to get on the podium that early on in my career. So it definitely came as a shock touching the wall. I was extremely overwhelmed and um, just obviously so excited. So um, yeah, super, super special moment. Um, and I'm really glad to have gotten on the podium that kind of early on in my career. And um, I'm super thankful for the experience I had in Rio. I get chills listening to you describe that moment. <laughs> and on top of being an Olympic medalist, you're also an alumna at the University of Toronto, where you completed your undergraduate degree in kinesiology. It must have taken a lot of discipline to attend university while training for the Olympic Games. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to balance those very different worlds? Yeah, it was it was definitely challenging. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of the university, first and foremost, and um, the support of my coaches and teammates and support staff and everyone that was kind of surrounding me throughout those years as I tried to balance the school and the, the swimming. But um, it was definitely something I just kind of had to learn. I had to learn how to work through. I had to learn how to time manage um and stay on top of my school and also be very present and engaged when I was at practice and that's a skill that I I have learned and I'm still you know perfecting and I'm going to continue to take that sort of skill of being able to compartmentalize what I'm doing and what I have to do um separate you know my school and whatever everything else that's going on in my head um from my swimming and so I I hope to continue to be able to use that skill that I learned and I think that I um, was forced to kind of perfect and get really good at in undergrad and I again I hope to continue that throughout the rest of my life wherever um, you know whether it's school or in the workforce um, in the future I think it's really important to be able to focus on what you're doing at, at that specific time so um, yeah that's that's something that obviously was a challenge, but uh, I'm really glad that I was challenged by it and I was kind of forced to learn how to work through that. But yeah, it was, it would have been possible without the support of the university. They um, helped make things easier and they allowed me the flexibility to be able to move exams if I needed to, if I was away competing or, um, you know, they gave me extra time if I was away competing and couldn't or if I was in a different time zone and couldn't hand something in on time like they were always super accommodating so I'm really appreciative uh, to them. It couldn't have been easy but it sounds like you got that balance down to a science. Let's go back a little bit in time and reflect on the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. Um, looking back on that experience what was your favorite memory from the Commonwealth Games in Australia? Um, that's so tough because I love the whole experience there. That was my first Commonwealth Games and um, I hadn't been to anything like that before. And I think 
it's just a little bit on a smaller scale because there's less people there competing as compared to like an Olympics for for example so um and it being in Australia was super cool that was a country I'd never been to before so I was really excited to explore Australia and and to be there um but I think some of my fondest memories are just like being in the village um I remember the village being so vibrant and there were so many colors and there was like a smoothie stand I remember near kind of like where the building we were staying at um and just the food was great and it's just so cool to be surrounded by so many other athletes and just so many people who have such passion passion and drive for their respective sport I think that's so inspiring so um yeah I think some of my fondest memories are just like walking through the village and meeting different people and um, being able to enjoy the sport in another, you know, kind of away from your sport. Like I was away from the pool, but I was competing there. Um, so yeah, just being able to like enjoy the whole experience. That sounds so special. And Ellie Black also brought up the smoothie bar in her interview. <laughs> so it sounds like it was a favorite amongst the athletes. Um, you've swam in your fair share of competitions. So if you had to go back and kind of think, what was the most unique thing about the Commonwealth Games when you compare it to other international competitions? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, my answer is going to be more specific to the actual swimming. It was unique for the competition to be outside. Um, that was a challenge for me as a backstroker, but um, something that was different and, and unique. And that's something I will remember is before, I think it was my 50 backstroke semifinal. It started pouring rain, like pouring rain sideways where it was like hard to even kind of see. And I remember just standing behind the blocks with the rest of my heat. And we were kind of looking at each other and we just kind of started laughing because it was just like, this is such a unique experience that we wouldn't have anywhere else and that I hadn't ever experienced before. So um, that's a memory that I'll remember forever. And um, yeah, probably another one of like my biggest memories from those Commonwealth Games. That's a great one. And you gotta love it when mother nature kind of feeds into the race. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, over your incredibly successful career, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of advice and there's a lot of young swimmers and young athletes who look up to you. If you could give those young athletes one piece of advice, what would it be? I would say, I think, I mean, it sounds very simple, but I think it's so important to just enjoy the environment that you're in and enjoy that the people that you're surrounded by, um, whether that's your teammates, your training partners, your competitors, the support staff around you, your coaches, like those are the people that have the greatest impact on you. And those are some of the most special relationships that I've been able to um, make within this sport, like apart from the actual swimming itself, like I've been able to meet so many cool people from all around the world. Um, and some of them who have become some of my best friends now. So I, and I think it's so, it's so cool and it's so rare to be able to connect with people like that so easily. And I think when you have something like a sport in common, you have such mutual respect for one another because you know what you do on a daily basis, you know um, what it takes, you know what they're doing. So um, yeah, I just find that it, it makes it easier to connect with people. So yeah, in the long convoluted way, I would just say really enjoy who you're around and the people you get to meet, the places you get to go, because those are experiences and memories and relationships that'll last longer than the sport itself and, and, and your time in the sport or your objective time um, or your ranking or your placing at a competition. That's such great advice. And we've reflected back on some of your major highlights in your career so far during this interview. I'd love to know when it comes to all the competitions you've been to and all of your experiences in swimming so far, what's the biggest challenge you faced in your career and how did you overcome it? Um, I think probably just recently, like the 2020 Olympic Games, just after COVID and all of the changes and uncertainty and 
protocols and postponements and everything that came with with COVID and quarantine. Um, I had to move change, training programs because of COVID. So that was kind of a really big challenge for me because that was Olympic year and that was a time where I didn't necessarily want to be changing my training program, my environment, my coaches. Um, that was something I wanted to have stability going into the Olympic Games. And But unfortunately, due to the circumstances, I had I didn't have a choice but to move. So, um, you know, in the end, I'm obviously super grateful that I did. And I think change can sometimes be just exactly what you need and, and you just weren't ready to make that jump. But um, I think it's all about just having perspective. And that's what I think got me through that challenge was just continuing to keep perspective of what was happening in the world and, and the Olympics in sight and just making sure I, I was taking care of myself. And um, yeah, I think just being able to adapt and, and know what you need, take things one thing at a time. And um, yeah, that's probably my advice on, on how I got through my biggest challenges, but I think that can transfer to um, you know, any challenge that anyone has stay calm and, and learn to just be adaptable and maintain perspective. For sure. That adaptability is key for athletes. And I think COVID presented a unique challenge. So it sounds like you were able to navigate it and obviously came out on top at Tokyo. Um, all right, we're going to wrap up this interview with a fun segment of this or that. I'm going to give you two options. Some are swimming related and others are just for fun. And you're going to tell me which one you prefer. Ready? Okay. Ready. Okay. Starting with solo race or relay race? Relay race. Okay. Hang out on the beach in Australia or by the lake in Muskoka? Ooh. <laughs> That's tough. I would love both, but I would have to say a lake in Muskoka. Okay, right back at home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cook at home or order in? Uh, cook at home. Okay. Um, practice in an indoor pool or an outdoor pool? Indoor pool. <laughs> and last but not least, lane one or lane eight? Lane one. Okay. All right, Kylie, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun chatting with you. I'm going to make sure to list your social media accounts so everybody knows where to find you. Thank you to everybody watching. Tune in next time for a new conversation with another champ. Bye.